Vancouver, good afternoon. Jazz 248, uh, direct Cowscar at 230. Jazz 248, Vancouver, good afternoon. When ready to send 12,000, gas cigar altimeters 3003. When ready, cleared to 12,000 on 3003. Thanks. Eclipse 9, 12, 000, 12, 000. when ready to send 14,000, Kelowna 3003. We'll plan for a visual onto uh, runway 33, be a 38,000 pound landing, flap 35, prop 1200, 97-102, set. 97-102 is set. And go around will be max. All right. We'll start descent about 60 back, and uh, we'll plan down the Blueberry Pulse and left base for 33. Okay. So what Lance has just told me there, it's the uh, type of approach he's going to do into Kalsagar. We're going to come in from the uh, the southwest of the airport and then uh, come down in through the valleys and then join uh, final for runway 33, which is the north uh, north runway in Kalsagar. And we'll start down in about uh, just a couple more minutes. Kalsagar is straight ahead of us at, uh, at about 60 miles, so it's uh, we're not really going to see the airport until we break out of the valleys, so we'll give you constant updates as we uh, progress. but. And uh, the numbers he just uh, he just told me was going to be our uh, according to our takeoff and landing report or card is uh, the weight of the landing of, of the aircraft uh, when we get to Kaskar, and he's going to do a uh, what we call a flap 35 landing. So the flaps once we uh, get closer in will be selected from uh, right now they're obviously at zero degrees. We'll gradually uh, increase the flaps to 35, and that gives us a uh, a ref speed which is a reference speed that we use a final approach speed of 97 knots which is just over 100 miles an hour. And uh, so we're going to be touching down fairly slow, which is good for the Dash 8. Works quite well in, uh, in the mountainous regions. And uh, it's, uh, so once we've done that, we uh, on our airspeed indicators, mine here, and again Lance is right here, we, there's a little orange bug that we actually use to, uh, to set that reference speed, which gives us, we could just quickly glance at it and see how, uh, how fast we're going. So, so that's what he's told me what we're going to do, and uh, we're all set to go. And what I can also do on the uh, flight management system, I can actually do a uh, what we call a landing performance. Because the temperature is getting warm down there, uh, the heat will uh, affect how the aircraft performs. Um, at the hotter it gets, the airplane doesn't perform as well as it would on a cold day. So what we could do is uh, we can uh, see if there's any restrictions to our takeoff uh, or landing power and that sort of thing. Mo mostly takeoff power. In the event that we uh, we have to do a missed approach at Gal Cigar, when we uh, set our takeoff torques, we want to make sure we don't have to. Uh, we don't over torque the airplane. So I'm just going to run through that on the, the landing performance page. So initially I'm going to type in runway 33. And just for fun, I'll put in runway 15 as well. There is only uh, the two options in Cascar. It's the same runway, but obviously, obviously uh, different ends of it. And the winds are uh, calm down there. So I'll just put in zero knots. And I could select, Lance has told me he wants to do a flap 35 landing, so I could select that in the uh, computer as well. The runway service condition for uh, for doing this wintertime operations, we can actually select uh, different settings. Today the runway is dry and damp, or dry actually. Uh, the outside air temperature in Galscar was reported as 26 degrees. The QNH is actually the altimeter setting at the uh, Galscar airport. Uh, that's what we use, that's what the pressure is indicating today on instruments on the ground. They were told that was 3003 inches. And the landing weight on Lance's computer, if I type the performance key and then I look over to this side here, it'll actually tell me what the computer estimates our landing weight is going to be. In this case, just over 38,000 pounds. So I could type that number into the computer and then I send it off. And the computer will come back with, uh, with some numbers or reference speeds, landing weights. And uh, we'll just wait for that to come back. Wonder, do you think it might be better, Senior, if we go down the Arrow Lake, over the dam instead of down Blueberry Pulse, or do you think it matters? It's usually a bit more scenic. If you want to see well, the lake, sure. Why don't we do that? Here's your uh, left performance, Sir uh, Lance. While you're looking that over, I'm just going to go to the PA into the back and talk to the passengers if you guard one. Got it. Good. When ready. So looking over the landing data, I've got both runway 15 and 33. There's no restrictions. Uh, your torque is like good for 100% if we go around. Okay. And your uh, numbers are good. Sounds good. Okay. 
Jazz 248, 212.5, Castle Guard site, we'll cancel the IFR. Jazz 248, check canceling IFR, watch for the Lear, they'll be airborne in uh, about a minute. And uh, Castle Guard Radio now, 1221, radar service terminated. Check 221 and double uh, watch the Lear, thanks. Talk to the way out, Jazz 248. Bye. Back is correct, contact Vancouver Center 134, decimal 2, clear the amount. Okay. Uh, circuit height in your lens, yeah. or? Yeah, that'd be good, thanks. Good. Checked. So right now, uh, we are descending to 11,000 feet, and uh, straight ahead of us uh, is the, what they call the Arrow Lakes, and it again it goes off to the north, but we're actually aiming for that point. The airport is actually uh, just right at 12 o'clock. You won't be able to see it until we pass overhead that dam. That's our plan, is to head for the dam, We'll try to get down around 3,000 feet or so as we cross that, and then we'll just, that'll put us into a, uh, we're actually going to land on runway 15, so we're going to be landing to the south, probably about five, six minutes or so. And uh, like I said, you, it's an airport, you don't really see the air, the runway until you're virtually on top of it, so, but uh, we've been up here quite a few times, we know the local area, certainly makes an advantage uh, when you're coming in here. Um, so as I said, that's our plan, we'll head for the, uh, the dam just straight ahead, that'll, we'll make a right turn and we'll be lined up on final. Let's go radio hello, Jazz 248. Jazz 248, Casco radio. Hey, we're about uh, 18 miles back, canceled the IFR with center, descending uh, through 9,400 feet, and we're planning overhead the dam for the right base for runway 15, about uh, four minutes. Runway 15, the active is 15, wind 1505, and Timber 3002. Traffic on the button 15, clear jet. Uh, be departing shortly, they're westbound after departure. Okay, we checked that. Uh, we'll call overhead to dam for the uh, for runway 15, Jazz 248. And uh, on the roll for uh, Lane X here, runway 15 uh, with a right turn out south. Roger. All right, to 10,000 feet, uh, lights are on, first radiation checks. First checks, please. All right, approach checks are, flight attendant has been advised, altimeters are 3002, set cross check. EC selector top, box pumps are on, hydraulics are on and checked. Approach treatment is complete, and our TAWS is on. Our uh, TAWS system is actually a computer-generated image of what uh, it sees outside. It's, uh, we activate that, it's a uh, terrain avoidance uh, warning system. And it's on a day like today, it's it's more of a backup just as a reference. But on a day when it's really cloudy out, and we can't see the ground. It's a very useful tool because it will actually show us exactly where we are in relation to high terrain around the area. Looking at the screen, we've got uh, yellow and red, which obviously yellow is caution. Red is uh, is the we want to definitely stay away from the yellow and the red. And if you can see outside, you can see the mountainous terrain that we're coming into. The uh, computer will actually display that on the screen, just like a video game. Right now we're coming up over the uh, south end of what is called the Arrow Lakes in uh, just uh, about 10 miles northwest of the Cascar Airport. And I told the uh, flight service specialist that works the radio in Cascar that we'll call uh, just overhead the dam. This is a fairly common way point to uh, a reporting point to let him know where we are because he knows where it is in relation to the airport. Is there uh, Learjet traffic, I believe, Lance on the TCAS? Got him. Oh, actually, I got him in sight. He's way off to the south, about two o'clock. Okay. He's coming up over that towering queue. Yeah, it's got Radio Jazz 248s out of 4,000, just overhead the dam for runway 15. We have the Learjet uh, well to the south, no conflict. Jazz 248, cast already rush. 3,700, 2,700. Hold cell. Radio altimeter. Check. So as we continue our approach, uh, the Casco Airport will appear once you get around this next hill on the right. It'll show up at about the one o'clock position. And then uh, just a matter of configuring the airplane for landing and uh, we'll be all set.
And there's the Cowskill Airport, 12 o'clock. We'll take standby on the flight director, please. Stand by. Thank you. We'll take gear down, please. So right now, as uh, Lance uh, calls out the uh, commands, and I'll uh, just selected uh, flat 15. The uh, selector down here, the gauge up here on the right on his side is showing where the flaps are traveling to. And I'm also setting the propeller RPM to uh, 1050, which shows up on these two gauges right here. And yeah, look good. Right now we're joining what we call left base for uh, 33 in Cavs Guards, right off at about our 9 o'clock position, just off to the uh, left-hand side of the aircraft. And we always do checks for everything we do, so Lenny checks for flight attendants advised, ignition manual, caution lights are checked, secret phase is off, landing gear. Three green. And we're holding at the final flap. Test two four eight turning final three three, Casca. Wind one five zero ten. Okay. We take flap thirty five, flap twelve hundred. Yeah. And the rest of the landing checks. Five hundred. So the flaps are now set to thirty five degrees. The prop are now up to roughly 1,200 RPM for landing. Uh, flap. 35, set and indicating. Receiver's 1,200, bleeds. Castlegar radio, this is... Are off, landing checks are now complete. Charlie Check. Romeo Delta, we are um, five miles southwest of Castlegar Airport. Roger, Castlegar Delta, Romeo Delta, we're on Castlegar Airport. Castlegar Romeo Delta, Romeo Delta, and we are on the 2-4 radio from Cranbrook heading towards Grand Port. One hundred. Castle Radio Roger. Castle Girl. Altimeter three zero zero one. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. I didn't know you were there. All day. Five thirty a.m. to nine thirty. Uh, my control. Your control. Thank you. Ah, plenty tricks. Radio Jazz 248 is clear on Alpha. Jazz 248, Casca, Radio Roger. After lines are complete. Check. So after we come to us, come to a stop. Be sure to turn in the airplane down. The seatbelt signs go off. And to shut the engines down, we use the uh, fuel control levers, what we call condition levers. So number one is uh, now being shut down. Number two will run for about 30 seconds, and then we'll shut that one down as well. And I wait for the uh, ramp guys outside. They're going to hook up the external power cart. Once he gives me the signal. And it looks good. So right now the aircraft electrical system is being supplied by a, uh, an external power unit. We just wait. Uh, once we 
go into feather. We usually wait about 30 seconds for the airplane to cool down and stabilize. And then, and then we shut it off. And then I finish up the rest of my flow. And that, that, and that's it.
Pavidimos, Calscars Pavidimos, fun approach that we have on the west coast. Uh, it can be on a day like today, it's beautiful. Even when the uh, the weather is is down, and we have to do the uh, the instrument approach. It has fairly high limits. Our uh, the minimum altitude that we can descend to is about 4,500 feet, which is about uh, oh, what is that? 20. 2,700 feet or so above the ground, so in the winter time it can be a bit of a challenge. Um, and coming in, the only approach we have is coming in from the north, and uh, as we uh, come overhead the airport, when we get down to our minimum descent altitude, the uh, the only one who can actually see the airport is the captain, because the airport will actually appear on the left side of the aircraft. The first officer, who typically does the flying, because the captain's too busy looking out the window. And uh, once we get the field in sight, then we just maneuver for landing. So. As you can see by looking around outside, it is it does sit in quite a valley. There's hills to the north, east. Uh, it's a bit more open to the south. Um, I'm sure you get some pretty good video of what it looks like out there. But it's a uh, it's a fun airport. It's a challenging airport, but uh, I think we enjoy coming in here. What do you think, Lance? Favorite one. There you go. Favorite one. <laughs>